it's a school now that has put up the welcome sign. It's not only to the Aboriginal parents, the Aboriginal students, but to the non-Aboriginal community within um, this area. The best part about the school these days is it's, it's more welcoming to parents and that. Because I can remember when I went, I went to school, yeah. The only time you ever see parents in the school is when, when my parents, when they were all mucked up. It's come a long way since I've been here for about six, seven years now, maybe more. And I found them that all the Aboriginal, like all the artwork and everything's come out, and a lot of the community are happy with that. It's a school that needed, um, it needed lifting up, and you know, Gail has been able to do that. Gail has been able to, um, I guess, lift the school up from from you know what it was. You come into the school and you see that um, you know you've got Aboriginal workers within the school. We've, we've, it's it's opened many doors here in this school now for the Aboriginal community. I was just thinking that as Lois was talking that I see it, the role of the school as well. We're building the future. You know, the, the kids of this community, probably many of them will stay living in this community. So the values and what we, and their solid educational foundation is going to be what builds this community. And so as much as um, any other role education has, it's about community building. Mm. And, um, you know, we've been really lucky to have people like Nandra and Des on our yeah. committee. You yeah, have more, more of the non-Indigenous kids putting their hands up wanting to learn, which is, is the best way I, I think that we can keep our culture alive. If we actually, you know, like I, me as a father, I keep it alive through my kids, through my, their artwork and their dancing and all that. I think the hardest thing is if the Gail did leave would be that for this community we'd have to learn to trust the next principal that come in because it, it took us a long time to actually trust Gail. We didn't know whether what she was like and all that. So we had to, she had to then gain our trust and we had to gain her trust. That would be a disaster but then hopefully Gail would have passed on her leadership and her knowledge to teachers that are going to stay within the school and hopefully that all of that girl has taught this school and brought this brought to this school will remain here. So, you know, we're just hoping that, that, that um, it'll just continue. We respect their points of view and I hope they feel strong enough that whoever comes in here, they say, this is how we want to do business. Mm. You know, because for too long, people have um, told them how it's going to be. Mm. Now, Obviously, I'm the boss, I do get to call the shots on a lot of things, you know, on safety, on policy that relates to education. Mm. But I, I like to take advice from them in the areas that I believe their expertise is greater than mine. And it's more of an awareness, isn't it? I mean, the, the parents within the school, whether they're Aboriginal or non-Aboriginal, are learning more about each other as well, and they're also embracing the Aboriginal culture. I guess at this school, we as Aboriginal people are allowed to be Aboriginal and it's very important as an Aboriginal person to be allowed to express yourself without fear of somebody um, in the background smirking or you know, doing what usually happens. And I, I've found that within this school in the last couple of years um, we don't face the racism here like you generally do in, in public schools and the kids are allowed to be themselves. They are, and that's really, really important because it motivates the kids, it, 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 then the kids want to come back to the school.